Forza Horizon 4 retains almost everything that made Forza Horizon 3 the best racer in its class and bakes it into a game that doesn't ever want you to stop playing. The stunning visual quality and sound design, the massive array of automobiles, and the extensively customizable career mode that have become hallmarks of the Horizon series are all here. What's new is just how much more effectively Forza Horizon 4 encourages us to return thanks to its shifting seasons, regularly refreshed challenges, and steady stream of rewards. Every real-time week, the in-game season will change and bring a whole new look to the world alongside a bunch of season-specific challenges. Every day, there are still more new Forza-thon challenges to complete, and every hour, there's a live online event to participate in alongside up to 11 other drivers who we work cooperatively with in order to chip away at a shared goal. All of this is on top of what's essentially the traditional Horizon experience, racing, rally, drift, drag, editing your own events with the Horizon blueprint, the lot. This is all made possible by Horizon 4's new default nature as an online shared world racer, where all the other non-traffic cars cruising the open world are human players. We still race against AI, unless you elect to race with or against friends and such, but you'll be sharing the open world itself with the rest of us, doing our own thing. It's not unlike a more intimate version of The Crew, though the difference is it's not compulsory. You can play entirely offline if you want, and being knocked offline for any reason isn't an issue either, because it's smart enough to seamlessly transition between modes with no loss of progress. Even as an anti-social grouch when it comes to multiplayer, I honestly found no good reason to remove myself from the online environment. Pausing, rewinding, that all still works, even online. And strangers are ghosted on contact too, during both free roaming and Forces on Live events, so no one can interrupt your cruising or stunt driving unless you link up and join a convoy with them. It's worthwhile to participate too, because the points we pick up from completing Forzathon challenges form a second in-game currency, separate from the regular credits we earn racing. These Forzathon points can be redeemed at a separate shop for rare cars and other vanity items, including emotes that seem to range from memes when Vine was still a thing to, yep, that's that dance my kid does 40 times a day. It's a bit like the mileage exchange in GT Sport. It seems most of this stuff can also be won randomly as you level up, and while I'm not a big fan of slot machine style prizes, it should be noted that there are no microtransactions involved. I've had a taste of all seasons, but autumn is probably my favorite. There just seems to be so much detail from the spectrum of colors in the trees as their leaves die off to the soggy roadside puddles. Winter is excellent too. If you've played Forza Horizon 3 Blizzard Mountain, you'll have a basic idea of what to expect. It's not just the world turned white, the landscape takes on an entirely new identity. Overall, Horizon 4's Britain is just gorgeous, and I've enjoyed exploring it immensely and harassing sheep. The overt distinctions between zones aren't as stark as they are in Horizon 3's Australia, which shifts from extremes like dry orange desert to dank rainforest, but a massive increase in elevation differences makes up for that. Having Horizon 4's roads wind over so many hills makes for more interesting driving. The star of the map, however, is Edinburgh, which is so much prettier than Horizon 3's surface paradise. Edinburgh in Horizon 4 is a beautiful place, oozing with history and boasting a really interesting road layout. The supporting cast of cars is the biggest it's ever been in the series, and also the most eclectic, with rides ranging from the 59kg Peel P50 microcar to the ludicrously large Unimog, which is fun, but also so big it can actually cause the chase camera a spot of grief sometimes. As a car nerd, I particularly enjoyed how exceedingly British the barn finds have been, representing a really respectful and well-rounded cross-section of British car culture. Showcases are back and they're some of the very best of the series so far. The Halo one will win hearts. Sorry Cortana, I gotta shake these bogeys. But I especially love the one against the Delta Wing Bomber, which is huge, fast and looks breathtaking soaring so close to the ground. Bucket list challenges are gone, though they've been replaced by Horizon Stories, which are essentially the same events wrapped in a different context. One thread lets us lose as a movie stunt driver, ignore the camera, while another sets us up with a YouTuber counting down her favorite racing games. It's time to go super off road. This story, which overtly pays homage to the likes of Ridge Racer and Test Drive and Smuggler's Run and many more, is a pretty classy and unexpected in game nod to some of the great races that have ultimately inspired the Forza Horizon series. This is just what I wanted to see. Groove music support is tragically gone following the death of the service, taking Horizon 3's wonderful in-game OneDrive music support with it. But that's the only bad news in terms of audio, though, because the team have outdone themselves yet again. Just listen to the anti-lag on this Escort. It sounds like Satan choking on a popcorn maker.
I'll always have a massive soft spot for the down under delights of Forza Horizon 3, but open world racing has never looked as good as it does in Forza Horizon 4. It combines a beautiful world that's really four hugely distinct maps in one with a constantly rewarding and self-renewing racing experience, and I really can't tear myself away from it. Playground Games hasn't just upped the ante once again, it's blown the bloody doors off. For more Forza Horizon 4, check out the incredible opening sequence and watch as we take on a giant bomber jet in an Aston Martin.